All right, all right, all right. Welcome to the sideboard. My name's Eric, and today we've got another episode of Dev's Deck. D Dev brings us Mono Green Ramp. And before anyone asks, if anyone doesn't know who Dev is, it's Dev from SBMTG. And you can see his stream on, uh, if you'll check the little eye up in the corner, it should give you a link straight to his deck tech where he explains the deck in general. Now, today we are going to be going over the deck, and let's go ahead and take a look at that. So, we have it right here, and it's a mono green ramp deck, and we are going to be, uh, <laughs> hi Jamie, you are first, welcome to the stream. Uh, we, uh, we are going to be running the upgraded version. I had planned to run two games with the you know classic version that he gave us here and then he did give us in the comments some uh, some upgrades and in the video he said you know carnage tyrant stuff so I went ahead and picked up some carnage tyrants and uh, you know a couple other nice little pieces I think would make uh, good additions to the deck and we're gonna give those a shot in game three but for game one let's go over the land base yes it's uh, mono green but it's a lot of deserts so um, if you know desert red, is, this would be desert green. Uh, we've got some uh, deserts of the indomitable, a good little cycling desert, but it, it's very important that we do have deserts because we're going to need those zombies. Grasping dunes. Uh, this is a, another little piece of removal on a desert. It is colorless, so it's not quite as good as if near deadlands. But grasping dunes, nonetheless, could save us in a pinch or maybe even remove a burglar token so that we can get through hash up oasis now this is a just really good desert because it uh, you know gives us a big pump ability and with some of our sideboard cards that can actually you know turn us uh, our removal on to just almost wipe the board and then hostile desert because you know you never know when you need that extra body and if we are sacking deserts and things of that nature then uh, we probably can get this online pretty easily and then scavenger grounds because well you don't want to die to god pharaoh's gift all right so let's take a look at the two drops druid of the cow and a couple copies of haze of pollen just to kind of stave off that early damage now we don't have a lot of interaction in this deck matter of fact we we're pretty much a one trick pony we're going to try to get to you know five and six mana cast that hour of promise we really need to get an hour of promise out on five um, we want to be casting you know on three a three mana ramp spell now we do have druid of the cow for two but our curve for two doesn't really line up uh, our curve for landing two drop ramp spells just puts us into a four on three so we're not really there but a three mana puts us into a five on four which gives us hour of promise so uh, that's why we have a lot of three mana ramp spells here with gift of paradise and uh, beneath the sands now beneath the sands is really good because if you draw it late game when you already have a lot of lands in play and you just don't need it you can chip it away or you know cash it in for another card just cycle it away and grab another card and then maybe you know go from there um, let's see we do have a couple copies of ranging raptors I think that you know against any deck that has red removal you're going to want to prioritize getting this down because even if you get it removed it still works as if it was like a beneath the sand and that's the, the real purpose there we can stop a little bit of damage, remove a card from their hand, get an extra piece of land on the battlefield, you know, we'll take it. And then there's going to be times where it's just, you know, unbelievably good, where we're chipping chipping in for two, or they're blocking with tokens or something like that. So, you know, th there's going to be, you know, those instances where Ranging Raptors is awesome, but the floor on this is a fatal push, and we don't get anything. That's, that's pretty bad, but most of the time it's going to be like an abrade or something like that. We should be able to get you know at least a land from that. Our four drop is a little bit weak. I know a lot of the comments on Dev's deck you know said that uh, Waker of the Wilds would probably be the better route to go here. Or not Waker of the Wilds, but uh, Champion of Ronus. 
so maybe and uh, we did pick up a couple of those for the upgraded version in game three we'll we'll look at those hour of promise this is going to be the backbone of the deck just getting this off as early as possible make those zombies that's why we have so many of the deserts over there you know we need those zombies and then arbor back stomper just kind of our saving grace hey we need a little bit of extra life we need to get back into this arbor back stomper is going to be there for us and then um moving on up the curve and this is where it gets you know a little bit serious we we have a lot of these you know six and seven and eight mana cards here so um you know scaled behemoth this is one of the the straight upgrades emblem gaming welcome to the stream uh, this is one of those cards that we would do a, a strict just straight upgrade on and that would be uh with a carnage tyrant like we would remove this for carnage tyrant and then Verdant Sun's Avatar. Now this is another card that it looks like it's probably just going to be necessary. Um, honestly, if it just gains five life and then bites a Harness Lightning, a lot of times that's going to be good. But if that's the only creature we have, then we just may be dying on the backswing with that. Um, it's kind of like Arbor Stomper, you know, six, seven, and eight. Um, or uh, five six seven and eight I don't know how much I like this many copies of these large uh, spells but I do know that when we get our mana we do not want to be looking for these we want to go ahead and have those on on curve when we finally get our ramp going and then the card that will win us games when this card lands on the battlefield it is game over. Glory bringer, hang up your hat, sir. You just became a blocker. Um, don't don't overwork yourself there, glory bringer. You know. So this is what we are aiming for today, fellas. We want to land sandworm, sandworm convergence, and just ride it out from there. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick little look at the sideboard. We do have another copy of sandworm convergence because it, it is amazing against teamer. In particular, it's really good against anything with Whirler Virtuosos and things like that. And then um, the same can be said about Thundering uh, Spineback as, as it gives the little 3-3 Trample Dinosaurs. So this is just a really good late game mana sink for us. So if we know we're going into the late game, I really like the inclusion of the Thundering Spineback in here. And then Green Removal. This is, this is going to be a lot of fun to, to play with. I did get a, a sample game in and I did get to pump a sandworm token up to an 8-8 with a hash up oasis and then cast this to remove all the blockers to do great things so um, you know that was a lot of fun uh, and I hope I get, we get to repeat that here on the stream anyway uh, a couple copies of appetite for the unnatural a few more uh, to round out our playset of ranging raptors as you know there's Against the early decks, you know, the, the red decks and things like that, you're going to want these Ranging Raptors because we need, like, all the blockers we can. If we can stop some damage and get a piece of, of ramp out, that is exactly what we're looking for. Prowling Serpent Bard because, you know, control is a thing. You know, uh, you, you don't want to be countered. So we will bring this in against any any of the blue decks that we think might be able to counter our, our stuff or our creatures. And then Lifecrafter's Bestiary. Now this is a card that we're going to bring this in against um, the you know teamer decks and the other mid-range decks, so that we can keep drawing cards, so that we can keep drawing answers and keep pressuring the board. That's how we're going to beat those mid-range decks by just you know out creating a board state, uh, creating a more superior board state, and just kind of crashing in. And we're going to do that with Sandworm Convergence and Lifecrafter's Bestiary. That's going to be you know what we're aiming for in those those matchups so and then you know the other two copies of haze of pollen you know which is going to be really good against you know those hazard decks and things like that when we just need that little bit of extra time to get everything online so that we can start getting those blockers out there and things of that nature all right guys well that's the deck what do you say we get into a few games here all right we will queue up and 
we won the dice roll, so we will get to go first. Now, I'm going to keep this hand. Really emblem. I, I actually got a um, uh, splendid uh, reclamation, or no, overwhelming splendor, and that was mine, and I built my deck around that, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I, I won all my matches. I don't know about who won the pre-release and who didn't, but I think we want to keep this hand because we have all of our ramp spells. Like We only need one land, and we're just on fire, and uh, we've got a couple couple turns to get that. Okay, and he's going to mulligan down to five. We do have two Gift of Paradise, so if this isn't a... Oh, mulligan. Yeah, he, he mulled five here. Let's fix that. I don't like that. Oh, guys. Between matches, we have to fix the lands. I did not... I'm sorry. I did not fix... The basic, I mean, the basic lands. We're going to have mismatched lands. We're going to lose for sure. If we just lose this one early, we're not going to count that. We'll just fix the lands and get back into it. Superstition, you know. I think it's like the only way to really break the, the stream curse is, you know, you have to put some effort into it. Matching lands. Okay, well, we didn't get our land there. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and run out our druid. If the druid lives, then we get to put down a gift of paradise, and the next turn play another gift of paradise. So we'll be in a fairly decent position. If the druid lives here, I wouldn't mind playing Waker of the Wild if we draw a land. But if we draw a land, we're more than likely going to just throw down that gift. We did draw a land, so... I could get the damage in here. I guess I should get the damage in. Because we have nothing we can do with the two mana. So we'll just chip in for the one point of damage. Who knows? Might help. Energy on the start, right? Yeah, I mean, that's... At least he didn't turn one of two, right? He didn't get that broken game plan, that broken start. Okay, so he's going to go ahead and kill our dude. So if we top deck, we can... If we top deck a land, we did not... Okay, well, we'll make double green and play this... We'll gift this, and that means we can cast Haze if we needed to, but I don't think Teamer's going to come out with a four, dro four drop Haster here. Don't think so. Laugh New Hellion. What would that be? What would a four drop Haste be? Laugh New Hellion? Isn't that a three drop? Ooh. Chandra. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five next turn. Okay, so we get a Beneath the Sands. A Waker. I think we just uh, go ahead and cast our Hour. And we're going to get two deserts here. I think I would like to keep the cycling deserts in the um, library. As if we do start drawing lands. I do think I want a um, hostile desert. And let's go with a hash up oasis. So that will give us our zombies. And then we can just kind of uh, pass the turn here. I'm sure he has a few cards to deal with some of these, as we haven't seen you know much from removal except for an afraid and a Chandra. Chandra exiles a shelter thicket, and we take two. 
He plays Long Tusk Cub. Another Long Tusk Cub. So, we 100% start swinging at Chandra here. Yeah, let's do that. And we should be able to trade our two. Uh, oh, wow. Chandra's just going to take it. Yikes. Okay. Well, if Chandra is just going to take it, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we could play a Beneath the Sands and a Waker, or we could play a Scaled Behemoth. And Scaled Behemoth looks really good. But Beneath the Sands makes sure that we can actually play the Sandworm Convergence next turn. I think I like that. So let's go ahead and create green. And we're going to cast beneath the sands. Oh, I punted there. We're going to take a point of damage from the hash up now. I forgot the waker was double green. Oh well. We'll, we'll take it. As of next turn, we get to really start putting down a little bit of heat. Uh, with the sandworm convergence, if we get to land that, especially if his last card's like Glorybringer. a magma spray off the top. I wonder if he redirects that at a zombie. It's basically, you know, him paying one mana to choose, you know, two damage either at us or at the zombie, so I wonder, I wonder if he redirects. Nope. Just still got it coming at us. Okay. Um, do we want to eat this? I mean, we're okay with that, right? We're okay with trading. If he wants to, you know, do some additional damage to it, then that's fine. But I don't understand the attack if he's not going to do some damage. Okay, so he's got a Chandra... that now has to like tick down to kill this or it just dies still dies any um that's game right like with a line of play like that that we win i think we win i mean it that seems like if he's in that type of desperate desperation then we should just have this in the bag uh, i'm gonna go ahead and slam the send word in convergence and if he doesn't have a way to remove this, we're going to kill that Chandra. I'm not playing around anything like unsummon. I'm going to swing one at Chandra and one at him. And we're going to try to close this game out while he's hurting. So we're going to go one at him, one at Chandra. And that's pretty good. Okay, so we're teamer energy definitely had a bad stroke of luck with not being able to produce energy there. Right, like I I don't know what he just did with his line of play there. <laughs> Uh, 
Glorybringer. Okay, that's kind of what we were putting on, putting him on having in, in his hand. Um, yeah, I don't know how much I want to show him. There's just no reason to swing with zombies. We're just going to do bad things here to him. Uh, let's just go ahead and we can show him this. That's four, right? We got two, two, sure. I guess the proper way to do that would actually be leave some of these open so we could bluff a, a spell from another color or something like that. But I I think we're in a win more state right now. <laughs> um, so game one, Dev, if you happen to get a chance to watch this, um, yeah, crush Teamer Energy with double Chandra, like, eh, Glorybringer, I don't know. Did they have a, like a really bad start? Did we just have a really good start? Too late. Um. I'm actually curious at this point why he's not in scoop. So I am going to, since we're in a win more status, I am going to uh, F8 here. This way we can let him burn his clock out. He's got us by about a minute. Okay, so he's going to confiscation coup one of our sandworm tokens. He needs to block her. This not having trample, I think, is the only real um, thing that I, I just really wish we had from, um, what's it called? <laughs> carnage Tyrant. Yeah. That, I mean, that. this would be a Carnage Tyrant. So it would have trample. It would be a 7-6. Um... What do you say we just get in? Glorybringer can live. I will let him pump all of his energy into this cub to make the Glorybringer survive. Um, does not bother me. As we're just going to play an Arborback Stomper. Pass turn and <laughs> again win more. So, what do you guys think about ramp right now? Do you think ramp's in a good spot? Is there do we just not have good cards to ramp into? Because if someone finds a way to cheat those cards into play, then they break standard. Like, what's going on with that? Does anyone have any ideas? Like, everyone, when we had Ulamog or Emrakul, you know, oh, it, you get this in too early. But we do have, you know, this type of stuff to ramp into. Sandworm Convergence. Is that good enough? Well, I guess we find out today. Um, 
This will make him scoop. If he doesn't, just have a counter. Next turn when we play Arborback Stomper, things are going to get ridiculous. I mean, it's already out of control. We're gaining five life here off of the Verdant Sun's avatar. I mean, the only real problem with Ramp right now is approach of the second sun. Like this teamer deck has no outs right now. All right, so sideboard, we definitely want our other sandworm. We want the spine back. I'm gonna cut down on some of these other large creatures we have because we're bringing in some other large stuff. I like Arborback Stomper. Waker of the Wilds, maybe, I don't know. I don't think we're really after Haze of Pollen. Um, Monstrous Onslaught, definitely think we want that. And then we'd love Lifecrafter's Bestiary. Maybe over the Waker. So basically, we're just cutting off the top end and adding a little bit more in the in the mid section here. Um. Yeah, turn two cub is still broken. Let's see here. Appetite. They're not going to have any enchantments or artifacts we need to destroy, are they? Uh, maybe not. Let's run it like this. We'll see how this goes. <clears throat> Alright, well we do not have enough lands to keep this hand. So we'll be mulligan. And then we do have two and a druid, which can get us into a beneath the sands, into an arbor back. It's going to be risky, but I'll keep this. We get a scry. Okay, so I'm going to actually keep that beneath the sands because we can cycle it on turn three if we don't have a land by then. Raptors. Oh, okay, you think raptors would have been good here? We'll play our tap land first. Have this deck run cub. Um, man. Well, you would need this deck to throw in some energy production. Okay, so there's a gift. I mean, I'm sure he just, you know, kills this. Right? Like, this bites in a braid or a harness. Okay, yeah. At least he gets no energy left over. Okay, so next turn we're going to have to start um, cycling to try to hit a land. Okay, so there's his rogue refiner. He's definitely at an advantage. Okay, we hit it. Um, I actually think we're just going to do uh, Beneath the Sands here. And then next turn we can do Gift of Paradise. If we hit a land, we can do both. He needs to pressure us quick unless he can draw his counter. I assume this is a Chandra. No, Anissa. Okay. We need to pressure that. Although giving her ultimate is bad if we get a sandworm down. Okay, 
isn't in W. Oh, yeah. Well, the SBMTG that's that's Deb's logo. I just you know I'm just running his deck. <laughs> uh, so you'd have to have talk to him about changing his logo. We could have played Arborback Stomper there. But if we just play Arborback Stomper and then it just gets removed by Harness Lightning, because you know four damage isn't a lot of work for this. So we gain three here, which negates the rogue's last attack. We did win the first one. We we won game one. We're in game two. Our opponent <laughs> doesn't want to give us priority here. We just want to gain this three life. Come on. Gain, gain our three life, cast our next spell, we'll give you the turn back. That's all you gotta do, opponent. <clears throat> Thank you everyone for coming out tonight. It, uh, it's a pleasure having everyone. Alright, we get our three life, finally. So, let's go ahead and ramp some more. Because that's what this deck does. So we beat Teamer in game one. Game two here, we I would like to really start applying pressure. I'm pretty sure the first car uh, first piece or two will get removed, but at least we are gonna gain some life here. Um, because he is gonna get to hit us at least for ten damage. Uh, I don't think we're gonna do much about this negative six here. And he's definitely leaving up essence scatter. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, we could cast the Verdant Sun's Avatar. Or we could cast the Gift of Paradise and then the Arborback Stomper. I don't expect either to live a turn to see the other one enter the battlefield, so I don't really think that maximizing uh, and getting, you know, I don't think ble being greedy here is the right way to go. I think we should be greedy with how we play our mana. So, we're going to enchant that one. You know what? I just don't feel safe about tapping that one now. So which one was it? So this will gain us three life, and then if this resolves, but I really don't expect it to resolve. I'm, I'm expecting a essence scatter here. Oh no! Okay, so so he has the harness to kill it. Maybe I don't know. Would we have gotten away with being greedy? Hmm. Well, uh, Tasha, it's actually going really well. This is game two of match one. And we won game one against uh, Teamer Energy here, and we're in game two. So we just need to win one out of these next two. And uh, we're, we were a little behind on time, but we've gotten that back. Ouch. Okay. Arbor back. So that's why he didn't destroy it. Okay. So next turn, he'll be able to ultimate and push us for 20 damage, leaving us at 5. That's not true, because he's tapped out. We'll actually be at 30, so we'll be at 10. Hmm. Don't know, guys. Really like to see a sandworm here. How much does this deck love us? Could it give us a sandworm off the top? No, it did not. Okay, well. We will... We will cast our Verdant Sun's avatar. Gain 10 more life. So we'll be at 4 next turn. If we don't block. 
Um, and that's if he doesn't have a harness lightning. So next turn, he has harness lightning. He will have at least six energy. He pumps five into that. He has one energy left over, so we don't have to worry about him pumping the long tusk cub unless he produces additional energy. Then he can ultimate Nessa swing 10 plus 5. Either then we would have to block save this one. Hmm. Seems bad, guys. Game two not looking so well, but one one uh, one good card. We might come back out of this. Sandworms convergence, something like that. Could help us. I think a card that you could use in the sideboard for this deck would be um, I, I, Blossoming Defense. Like, if you land something, man, you don't need that just taken away by their main board confiscation coups. Ooh. Ooh, that's brutal. Uh, he did not ultimate, though. However, he also didn't use Chandra because he wants to see how this plays out. Okay. Well, we're going to let him tick Chandra up. We're going to stop this. We take what ten here. Again, I'm thinking we need sandworm convergence off the top. I'm not for sure that would be enough at this point. Well, I'm I'm glad you you watch when we go live. I um I try to go live at least two or three times a week. Whenever Dev does a, uh, a video, I'll always post in his comments. I need to get a schedule up so you guys can see it, um, as the channel has actually grown quite a bit recently, and I appreciate every one of you for that. Thank you. Thank you so much for your support. We, we cycle this, right? We have to cycle this. We get a couple blockers. I don't know if that'll be enough. Yeah, we can we can try. I don't want to scoop early here. Let's see. Do we think we'll have to go the grasping dunes route? I don't I don't think that's gonna help, right? That'd be some dire. Uh, don't see him using any graveyard shenanigans, so I mean, technically that's a better out than anything else, as it's cheaper to put into the graveyard to activate Hostile Desert. I'm going. I'm, I'm stretching for for something to help us win at this point, guys. I would like to see this deck do well. It's been so long since we've had ramp, and uh, I mean real ramp. I don't mean like turn four. I pay six energy and drop my 10, 10 or 12 drop or Emrakul, Ulamog. Oh, what a deck. He catches in the one that was getting close to ultimate, digging for cards. Um, well, that's going to be game. Okay. He does have the flying guys here, so we're going to go into game three. Okay. Would we want Haze of Pollen in this matchup, since we know he has Nyssa? Just, is that the way to go? Maybe more scaled behemoth. Less waker. 
Let's try that. Let's give ourselves a little bit more of the, the big bodies to, to jump into. Okay, well, we do have three lands. We have some three mana ramp spells. We have a five and a seven. That's where we want to be, guys. Okay, so we'll play our tap land first. And then we're just going to pass the turn back. Too much ramp? Um, probably in game one. Yeah, probably. But I, I like being able to remove certain types of ramp against certain matchups. When I play ramp spells, uh, I always thought that ramp, ramp decks were the best when they had multiple ways that they could ramp. But when it really comes to ramp, you've really got to worry about this. Why am I ramping? And at what turn am I ramping? How much am I ramping for? And at what turn am I going to be able to play out you know, a spell? So if I only have two four drops, why do I want a turn two ramp? Um, because you know I'm going to have a turn three four mana, you're not going to maximize your, your spells out of that. However, you would be able to, say, play a three mana spell and then another two mana spell if you were getting something like, uh, you know, a Gift of Paradise on that three. So, in that aspect, I can kind of see it. So, uh, that's why I, I really like with the choices we have here. I guess I better play some, some cards here, right? Uh, I have nothing to do and I'm, I'm thinking about playing a land here. It's horrible. Sorry. Hi, Mizazu. Welcome to the stream. Um, okay, so there's his ramp. Probably one of the better pieces of ramp in the, the meta right now. Okay, so we are going to get to play a turn two piece of ramp. I don't want to actually play beneath the sands because if I do not hit my land spell next turn then I'm going to want that and Beneath the Sands is one of those cards that will actually thin my deck of ramp spells I mean of land so it'll actually decrease my odds of hitting a, a land card next turn so that's another reason that even though our life total is not under pressure we're going to go with that over the Beneath the Sands because we want that next land Um, if I pronounced it right, then then hey, it, it's it. There's there's no dumb names as long as we can read them. No one reads my, no one can read mine most of the time. Okay, so we did hit our land, uh, which he did destroy our gift of paradise. But we hit our land, so we can now. Wow, I mean he just used his. Uh, I can't believe he just burnt appetite on a piece of ramp wow I mean that's we're in a pretty good spot because next turn we get to hour of promise and we already have one desert which is what you want you gotta have that first desert before you cast that hour of promise we're gonna have that hour of promise with a desert and we'll get two zombies that can die to his glory bringer or whatever liking the stream just getting back into magic from a long time ago which one of devs decks do you recommend for someone getting back and want to do Friday night magics um, do you want to be competitive Justin or do you want to just have some fun do you like combo or do you like uh, aggro do you want to break some people's heart and what's your budget if you have a hundred dollars uh, without a doubt just go get mono black aggro Long. If you have $100 and you need to get back into Magic, Mono Black Aggro, the deck we ran, oh my god, that deck is great, guys. I, I highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. So, we can Hour of Promise here. We can Arbor Back Stomper. Uh, we're, we're looking pretty good. We've got six mana. We can Scaled Behemoth which doesn't look bad. I like Hour of Promise and then we'll just kind of roll from there because at this point I do want to start thinning the deck. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yes, this deck was by SBMTG. I'm sorry, I missed that comment earlier. Um, I think I want just Hash Up Oasis. something cheap that you can build on that you like so you want something that's highly upgradable that maybe you can you know add five ten bucks to a week and it just gets stronger and stronger every week when you play it give me a minute to think on that uh, we've played a couple really good decks lately that were just you know easily upgradable and they I think that they, they would last Honestly, I would tell you to try to get into, like, um, if you had a little bit of money to get started, if you could build maybe a budget version of um, Pummeler, one of the Pummeler decks, it would give you an energy-themed uh, deck, and we know how good energy-themed decks are right now, but it would give you an energy-themed deck, and then you could just kind of add to that a little bit until you could kind of actually slowly build, you know, your... A tier one deck but if you're just really wanting to be casual and you're not really worried about you know just crushing people dinosaurs are a lot of fun like honestly if um, but my personal opinion I'm a combo oriented type of person so if I was going to say that I wanted to play we're, we're gonna play um, the Arborback Stomper and Beneath the Sands here. Um, I would play like Dousing Dagger because that's a deck that can range anywhere from like a, a $30, $40 deck all the way up till to a two $300 deck. And, and the number of ways that you could play the Dousing Dagger deck is just ridiculous I mean it's currently our call to action here on the channel is who can build the best you know dousing dagger deck so you know I I really like those decks and if you are wanting that combo style deck hey there, there's you there's your one you can have some fun with with your friends and most of the time it's it's really hard to get mad at losing to a dousing dagger deck well, I guess we should cast this maybe maybe we should have cycled it but at this point, I'm wanting to cast as many of these big bodies as we have. We need to start crashing back in. It didn't get you out of fifth place? Like, so you always got, you know, like fifth place or so? I like to make a good deck at at least get out of the top fives at um, FNM. Like $30, $50 budget. So you're wanting to get in the top four at your your F and M. So does your F and M like locally like do y'all normally cut to a top four? Uh, we're going to play this because it is a great mana sink. Now, granted, he's going to be able to kill this Arborback Stomper next turn. Uh, you know what? But he can't kill the skilled behemoth. And messed up, didn't I? I gotta quit tapping all the green sources. I'm notorious about that online. So let's give Arborback Stomper. Um, yep, give him Trample. We'll start cracking in. Well, that's pretty sweet of him to, to give us his rogue refiner like that. Now, how much do we take on crackback here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15? Ooh. 
We can't get through with all that. So 5, 9, 10, 11, 12. If you do like combos, Justin, I just the the I think the basics of the dousing dagger deck where you just need you know a couple panharmonicons and let me let me make this block really quick here. You just need a couple panharmonicons, dousing daggers. I know dousing daggers kind of the price is a little higher than it should be because you know uh, commander pe uh, people who play commander really like the deck because you know the backside of it make three mana. Uh, but the uh, oh man, we're I don't know if we can come back from this, fellas. So we're taking. Well, we don't have a lot of blockers here, but we are going to be able to stop a little bit of damage. Don't think it's enough. Essence scatter? Yeah, that's game. Dead on board? I think we were dead on board either way. But, you know, that's that's how that goes. Um, I was talking about the Dowsing Dagger deck. I think that you can get, like, the basics of it. Um, one of the first pieces of upgrades you're going to want to do is decide if you want to want to be, like, a two-color or a three-color Dowsing Dagger deck. And if you do want to be three colored, work on the lands first because once you just get you know some Ferocidons, your Trespassers Curse, your Daggers, and uh, you know those cards, you that's pretty much it right there. From there, you can get that combo to go off any way that you want, and that that's a really cheap deck that'll allow you to practice deck building to get back into Magic and things of that nature uh, because. There's so many different ways you can attack. And then uh, the second upgrade would definitely be Sahili Ra. Um, definitely think Sahili Ra. I have seen some people use the uh, mechanized production, though. So, um, in mechanized production instead of Sahili. Wow. Okay. Um, I like that. Let's go ahead and get into an additional game. And then game three, we'll, uh, we'll do some upgrades. And we will we'll kind of... Uh, see if it works better with you know carnage tyrants and we'll probably triple or quadruple the cost of the deck but we'll see if it runs better you know throw more expensive cards at it that's what works right but I think that's one of the best things that about these decks is you know you can take one of devs budget decks you can play it as budget and then as you get money you can actually upgrade it we have all the lands that we could ever want we're just going to be ramping, ramping, ramping. Uh, we're in game one, so we know we're heavy on top end spells. So we're going to hit those. I'm going to keep this. I like it. Let's just pray we're not against red deck. Actually, I would rather go against red deck than approach. However, I don't know what our game one is against either. Um, we're just going to... I forgot to fix the lands again. Should just concede, right? Just concede, go fix the lands. And again, that's why I picked the that particular deck, because there's so many ways to attack it. You're sure to have fun with it at some point, especially if you like those combo feels. Also, I do want to say, you know, uh, there's a lot of other content other than just devs decks here on our channel. If um, you do like the the channel, go check it out. Um, I think I'm going to cycle one of these beneath the sands here. Check out the channel, and if you find some content that you do like, you, if you find that you know you like more, multiple of our things, go ahead and uh, give us a subscription. I highly recommend it. All right, we'll cycle this beneath the sand, see if we can draw into a little, of a little bit of action, as we're going to be really looking for an hour of promise into, you know, a little bit more power. Wow. Okay. Are we sure we didn't go fix the lands? Uh, I'm just going to cast the beneath the sands this turn because I'm tired of drawing lands. This is kind of opposite of what we did earlier. We have another? Yeah, we do. 
and then that'll allow me next turn to play a land and gift of paradise on the untapped land and we'll have three mana open again one problem workshop is I have tried um, the Sphinx's tribal deck I had a lot of fun with that deck now that's another deck that you can actually play multiple ways and that's a really cheap deck I I forget the pr overall price of the Sphinx's tribal deck but it was uh, it wasn't very expensive okay so I'm gonna keep sandbagging the scavenger grounds here but I am gonna get out the hash up we will Gift of Paradise this, gain three life. We're really gonna need to draw into something here. I the the deck definitely feels like there's something there. It put up some really strong fights. Uh, as far as the Sphinx Tribal deck goes, I mean, I, I was impressed by the deck, but overall, uh, the power level of it's just, if it goes off, you 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 win. Like, you win. Or you end up accidentally decking yourself. Um, <laughs> and it, it, one or the other. But, um, and the deck's not overly complicated to, to play either. I thought about doing that. Uh, you guys have to let me know what you think about that. I thought about coming up with a, a, like five categories that I would rate these decks as we played them. You know, like one of the categories being, uh, wow, that's that's bad, right? Because uh, we have to sacrifice this desert to do it. Um, but I thought about coming up with a few categories, like kind of like my own rating. Um, one of the categories being. How hard was this deck to play? Like, do you have to be able to make some really technical moves to be able to play it? Um, you know, definitely I would have my own consistency rating. But I thought about coming up with like four or five different, you know, little categories that we could do a rating on. And of course, you know, guys, I'll I'll definitely make sure that you can find out the explanation of where the the numbers come from. Oh, bone picker, full price bone picker too. Ah, that's that's painful, but he don't care. Ay ay ay. Um, this is what happens when you play ramp. Sometimes this happens, and that's that's game. Even if I would have used the negative one to minus one, like we would have still been taking eight damage. So that's why it was just no, not really worth it. Well, I mean, there's ratings on that like Dev does, which you know how good the deck is and things like that. I wanted to do some decks from a pilot's perspective, like um, as if you know someone was just handing you this deck, and that's kind of what what I feel like it is. I feel like you know we've got Dev there; he creates these decks, and he's like, "Here, Eric, this is what you're playing tonight." And um, I would like to you know do some kind of rating based on that. So if you just grab this deck and run down to your local game store, what are your your? Uh, I want a rating that will give you. You know some type of odds on how that deck's gonna play for you you know that sort of thing like how does it match up in the meta um, you know a couple of those so I think uh, I think at some point this week I will um, I'll play around with that okay so we are playing against mono black aggro the deck that I was telling you guys about that, that I think is really really good um, this will absolutely destroy the little deck. We're definitely going to have to cut back on some of these bigger things. I think I'm taking all the scaled behemoths out. Um, because if he's going to walk the plank, he's going to walk the plank anyway. Um, <laughs> the dino, or the, the crocodile is going to walk the plank. But anyway, um... I need to be gaining the life, and I really don't want to cut Verdant Suns out against this this deck. 
Now, I'm not really worried about this card. I am going to take out Beneath the Sands. We're going to bring in Ranging Raptors. And we're going to bring in Appetite for the Unreal. Because if, if I'm right, then this deck is going to have some vehicles. And we're going to need to be able to kill those. Sandworm Convergence may be what we're looking for. However, if we don't gain life, this deck will kill us either way. I don't think we have time to set up a Life Crafters. So let's fill in this last spot with a Haze of Pollen. If we get the mana, I'm, I really, really want to have that Burden Sun. So we're just going to leave in all four Burden Suns. Okay, we would like to play first. If it resolves, you are 100% on that. Alright, so we cannot keep this. This is better. Um, what do we think about that, guys? Life gaining cannot be fatal pushed. Yeah, let's keep that. So we'll just play the hash up and pass the turn. I will have to be very careful to not take additional points of damage from uh, lands this game, as this uh, mono black deck would definitely, uh, definitely hit us pretty hard. It's kind of like, depending on which, oh, it's not mono black. He splashed red. Ooh, so he's got Hazard. Even worse. That means he can keep in cards that are like... Uh, Licensed Disintegration. We're not looking at Walk the Plank. Ooh. I think I sideboarded wrong here. So this is where you really want to have just you know, more good four drops. And I guess we could just get in, but no. I mean we are. We're gonna swing for. If this is tapped, it's safer. <laughs> it seems a little, a little strange, but if it's tapped, it's safer. So. Um, He's going to be wanting to push damage, so he's going to clear, want to clear his way. Thanks for joining the, uh, the channel. I heard someone uh, subscribe there. Thank you. I will have to get my notifications up so I can, I can see that better. Okay. So we are getting abraded, and that allows us to draw an additional... Um, or get additional land. And he gets to play Bone Picker. Okay. That's really good for us because that means that we get to, you know, play cards like this. Now he has to deal with Arborback Stopper. You know, now Druid is not near as much of a threat because there's this 5-4 that he has to deal with. Now, granted, all he's going to do is block. Flying Death Touch, he blocks, but I'll trade Arborback for Bone Picker. Arborback for Bone Picker, and I do 3 damage to him. Plus, at this point, we're playing double Arborbacks, and... Ah! Oh, Okay, so if he takes the Haze of Pollen, cool. If he doesn't, we're going to play this you know, monstrous onslaught here. I assume he takes the monstrous onslaught. Although he still has to come back from the uh, Arborback Stompers. Unlicensed Disintegration would do it for him here, though. Gifted Aetherborn, okay.
another druid. Well, I definitely think we just swing over the gifted Aetherborn and play another Arbor back. So we only get to do, well, we do zero damage. We just trade those two cards. Oh, wait. Sorry. Thought it was out of. And then it just allows us to gain five more life. We basically are where we were at last turn. Um, he spent a few cards. We spent one. I don't know. We lost. I don't know. I don't know how that that really turns out. If near Deadlands, on my Stomper. Uh. I think we we trade here really like to hit something off the top that we could do something with. Uh, I'm going to cycle this. Because we can always just play the druid. Okay, so there's an hour of promise. That's what we're looking for. And we'll attack and then we'll just pass the turn here. Next turn we get to Hour of Promise. Even if he kills our guys, we can Hour of Promise, make a couple zombies, and we're still in this game. Oh gosh, my chat went down. I'm sorry guys. Uh, Dev's deck is Grixis Dagger Burn. And uh, personally I think that if you're if you have money to put into Grixis the um oh wow can we go one uh we've already it's too late for that we can do it next turn though yeah we can so let's just go ahead and attack this turn we'll attack for two i think it's a pretty safe attack And then we'll cast our promise. So he's got a lot of one mana dudes. We've got plenty of green. Really like scavenger grounds and hostile desert. This way, after we actually destroy the scrap heap next turn, or whenever we finally destroy it again, we can sack the graveyards and be done with it. His may be four color. I, I've seen Dagger run in so many, so many versions, and I've I've played his. Oh man. Every time we get a, get our monstrous onslaught, they take it away from us. It's not fair, guys. It's just not fair. We have ranging raptors. If I do this, he just blocks. Really? But next turn he starts swinging in for six in the air. We can't swing. It's just not worth it. Hmm. 
really going to need to hit something here. Again, everyone, welcome to the stream. I stream at least three times a week. So if uh, you like the content, you know, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to. Either way, I definitely recommend you check out the content on our channel. And then if you like it, then subscribe from there. Never was one to just, you know, blindly subscribe to, oh, I see him, so yeah, I'll subscribe. But if you do decide you like the content, go ahead and do that. Okay, so we take the six, just like we expected. That, I don't think we can win this race. He'll be at 19. We can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, we cannot win this race. Eight, nine. That helps. Do we have any lands? We have no lands in the graveyard. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If we go. Now we do not have enough to go Haship Oasis and our promise. He. Doesn't have the cards to remove. Like, so he's only swinging again for six more in the air. He will not be able to remove two zombies. And then next turn, we hash up on one of these. I think we swing with everything, cast uh, Hour of Promise, and then pass the turn. Okay, let's do that. Sorry, I got all serious on you guys. Um, don't see any reason to leave up. Like, there's no real reason to leave up any of these. Um... I'm going to grab both Grasping Dunes. If we have to, next turn we will start sacking those. Depending on what he does here, he's looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. He's looking at lethal on the correct back. I don't know he's not because he's going to gain. And then he sacks as if near Deadlands to kill one of our dudes. No! Come on, Arbor back off the top. We need some sort of life gain. Even a small... No ribbons. <laughs> I forgot about ribbons in the graveyard. Uh, well, that's that's game two. All right. Well, that was match two, guys. So you want to jump over here and let's take a look at the deck and some cards we would like to replace. Um. So let's go to standard. I picked up a few cards that, you know, and the cards that I picked up are some cards that just everyone was really mentioning in the comments. So we're going to we're going to upgrade this deck with those. Now, again, I tell everyone, let's embrace energy. Everyone should be, you know, running these decks in energy decks and things like that. So, you know, if we went that route, maybe we would want to throw in some energy cards or something along that nature. But for today, I've actually just pre-selected a few cards that we're going to throw in here. The first one's going to be Champion of Ronus. We're going to we're going to actually put that in instead of the Waker here. So that's going to be. I'll forgive my my typing skills here, but I picked up a couple champions, and we're going to replace that here. Um, if you don't, if you're not familiar with Champion of Ronus, we'll go over these. You may exert Champion of Ronus as it attacks. When you do, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. So we're going to try to use this to kind of 
cheat out a couple guys. Everyone in chat seemed like they really liked that idea, so I, I figured, you know, why not? We'll give that a shot. Now, Scaled Behemoth, uh, of course, we're going to be uh, trading that out for some uh, uh, tyrants here. Uh, can I even spell? I can't spell, right? I'm sorry. And I only picked up three tyrants because I think that that's the actual number we need to go there. Another card that I did pick up because I just... I think it's great in this deck, especially when we're running those Arborback Stompers and things like that. Nissa Vital Force. So, uh, I wanted to throw a couple copies of Nissa in here and maybe drop down a Verdant Suns. And then, I don't know if we want to go a fifth copy, but Nissa gives us something something else to do besides Arborback Stomper and Hour of Promise. If the deck is set to be a, you know, five mana on four, then we need some really important things to be doing on five mana. And I thought Nissa was just something else that we could add in there that would really, you know, smooth the deck out. Personally, maybe we could cut one additional card somewhere to maybe throw in the third Nissa. Uh, but if we were going to cut anything else, I think it would be a singleton copy of Beneath the Sands for a Walking Ballista. Um, I I know everyone we were talking in the in the chat and things like that. Um, yeah, I rented some Walking Ballistas and I, I actually own my playset. But um, I would like one or two copies of Walking Ballista in here. Maybe even remove Haze of Pollen um, for an additional copy of Walking Ballista. But Walking Ballista is definitely going to be very, very good for us. And now that we are on the upgraded section here, let's look at these horrible, horrible lands. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 forest. Now we're matching. So, sideboard, I don't know what else we would really bring into the sideboard. Um, Ronus. Ooh. We want to drop a haze for a Ronus? I don't know if I have any Ronus. I mean, I can always just go grab them. No, I would have to go grab us some Ronuses. Rona seems good though, right? Although, what else are we gonna do with it? Like, I guess we turn three it and then turn four an Arborback Stomper or turn four Nissa, make a dude a five five swing with Ronus and said dude. Um, would we want that over, say, Ranging Raptors? I don't know. We don't have a lot of other cards that we can bring in here. I do like the idea of Aronis, though. Um, I don't. It'll take about four minutes to to grab Ronuses, j like just to grab one card. So we'll actually leave Ronus out, and we'll run it with that third copy of Nissa. Now I could be bad wrong by taking the Haze of Pollens out of the deck, um, or out of the main board. But I didn't really, really want them when we were playing just a moment ago. So, all right, guys, let's uh, let's jump back into some cues. We'll see what the upgraded version of Dev's deck looks like. Now, granted, I'm sorry about the list up in the corner there below the logo. I can't really do anything about that as we just kind of upgraded it on the fly. Oh man, we've lost all of our points. I'm gonna actually start spending tickets now. I'll have to go rent Teamer Energy and get us some points back. Isn't that sad? Like, that's how you do things. Like, oh, I just need points. Well, we'll go rent Teamer and get it back. Uh, we have a two into a three, into the other three, into the five. If we hit any land, we are gold. I'm going to keep it. 
and then we have our goal like what we're ramping into so uh, this should be pretty good alright so we'll just play a land pass the turn and go from there uh, some Mario music we did hit our land so this should be pretty decent for us while we're waiting on him I want to do this because um, everyone is constantly asking me you can pause the video and take a look these are the names of all of the songs on our playlist so you can pause it they all come from OC remix right here on YouTube you can find the link in the description box below but this is our current list of songs and I'll be adding more to it later but if you want to pause and look at any of the songs that we we play here on the stream this is the full playlist okay guys we'll we'll jump back over here so he passed back to us so we do have four mana on three again um, something we just don't really care about I guess we could well we could swing for one start doing that early damage or we could play our three mana spell and, and stay open for let's do it like this and we'll we'll maintain the option of cycling so we will We're going to put it here, and then we'll just pass the turn, and then we can we can cycle at the end of turn if we want to. Still don't exactly know what we're playing against, so. Drake Haven. Well, we know what we're playing against now. This is Corey Burkhart's deck from uh, 15th place, and if you watched my uh, uh, content coverage for uh, this weekend. I spoke a little bit about that deck as my honorable mention, and I did find those deck uh, those deck lists put in the description for you guys, so you'll be able to see that. Um, we do not have deserts. How did this happen? How did we not get a desert this one time? Um, so sandworm convergence is really really good against Drakehaven however countervailing winds is going to blow us away so we're gonna want our scavenger grounds and I guess we just take a hash up and then we will get in for one because you know that's safe to do this turn other than that that's that's what we've got so here he gets to like cycle all the things counter all the things do all the things we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, he's got zero cards in. Oh my! Zero. Oh, but he could cycle a cast out for one, put one card in the graveyard, and then his countervailing winds becomes a. Uh, syncopate for one or force spike oh man that's bad but do we wait one more turn I think we wait one more turn And 
we're not going to swing into this because I'm sure he's got cast out and a number of other things that he can cycle away and create uh, Drake after Drake here. Okay, hieroglyphic elimination. He gets a Drake. So next turn we'll have one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can't countervailing wins us. Although he does have cast out, so this sandworm's convergence is not uh, end all be all here. I don't think we have a reason to. Use that right now. We are going to try to just get this down. And then we can cycle away this desert. So if he was going to cycle a cast out, he just decided not to. Corey Burkhart took this to a 15th place this weekend at the uh, GP Portland. Uh, this is a really good deck. I actually thought about running it at some point this week. Um, I think the next deck I'm going to run, though, is the Mono White Vehicles. Did you guys see that list? That was a, That was a fun looking list. has cast out, I'm sure we'll see it. I think the smartest plan for him would be to just wait on the cast out as um, he would be able to do that until he had you know, a lethal amount of attackers. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Because these kind of things happen. He's got a counter open is the reason I didn't play the Verdant Sons. And we're just going to start getting in with our worms. Just putting the pressure in like he has to to block these. Um, granted, he can block them easily. I mean, Drake Drakehaven can make so many blockers. I think every turn after this one, I'm going to start keeping up the scavenger grounds. Again, we are under no threat of dying, and I don't believe that the Drake Haven deck runs mainboard approach. So we'll take two of his Drakes, and we might end up forcing him to cycle his way through his deck? I don't know. So he's definitely looking for a cast out right now. And we're just going we're going to be using this as a kill spell. We're going to be turning it sideways. The goal will be to swing in with both this and the, uh, the worm. Hopefully he'll have to spend enough. Okay, he does have the cast out. He almost cast it right there. Okay. Um, so we're going to make this dude bigger. swing.
Wow, so he's just going to take the 10 here. Uh, well, we will attempt. We're going to attempt this. I don't know how well it'll work, but we're going to attempt a Burton Sun's avatar. I think this just gets countered. Okay. So he's going to cast out Sandworm's Convergence as we get our Verdant Sun's Avatar. Wow. Alright. I still don't know how this deck, this, this game's going to play out. I've seen this, this um, Drake Haven deck just flood the board with Drake so fast. And... You know, if he can make six drakes, that's punching 12 per turn. Um, it's doable. Oh, Fumigate. Fumigate. Ouch. Ouch. Um, well... We're definitely in some trouble here. as he has a much better way of rebuilding. Well, when you're holding Fumigate, I guess we know why he waited so long to uh, to cast out the... Okay. Carney T going to show up. Show a little love. You know what? I think we're supposed to leave that open so that we can... Eh, it doesn't matter. I'm definitely going to try to thin the deck, so I'm punching with this. If he wants to block, make your, make your Drake and block, sir. Three Drake Havens. So he cycles a sensor, makes three drakes that's it's pretty good so I personally think that with the let's see I don't know what's the math here he hits us for four next turn yeah, we want to use the ability. We want to thin the deck as much as possible. So he hits us for four next turn. And then he can make, let's see, cycles. He can make one, two, three. Cycle, make two, two more. Three more. Ouch. There's the sarcophagus. knock out the graveyards here at least he doesn't have all of these cards in hand now although he's going to be able to just refill this it's what this deck does I don't know if Carney T is a Carney B reference or not uh, oh that's good for us Does it survive? It does survive. Okay, so he needed all of his bodies to stop this carnage tyrant. Again, carnage tyrant having trample is extremely relevant here. However, I think we're only getting through with one point. And that's not going to matter because he's going to gain two life here. So we're actually going to take a net loss in damage here. He's going he's gonna to be at 14 at the end of our swing. Um, okay, well. I think it should probably just yield to this at all times, right? Like, if he'll let me. He's just paying for them all at once.
I like um, Wizard's new um, triangle they've put up here, their yielding symbol. I think it's really good for streamers, so you know you guys can see what I've yielded to and what I haven't yielded to. If I am currently uh, you know yielding on on swings, here we go. Net net lost one point of damage and one carnage tyrant, and now he can cast this from the graveyard at instant speed to gain six life. This deck is really really good. There's no wonder that this deck came in 15th place almost made the top eight and honestly i think that if cory burkhart would have made top eight with this deck he might have been positioned to take the entire tournament if he would have just been able to get past you know that that last loss there well we are still stalling we are going to keep swinging though as futile as it is, but we do have to force him to keep doing this. And there's a curator. He's going to be able to get up in the air now. Um, we're just going to continue following further and further behind in this. I mean, not like he wasn't already up in the air, right? Yeah. We do actually get a point of damage in on that swing. I'm going to play it out. I'm not going to scoop early here. There's there's no reason to as, you know, I'm sure he knows. Oh, wow. I mean, now he's got counters. and This is a great card in this deck. Like, countervailing wins. Counter target spell unless this controller pays one for each card in your graveyard. Now, you can counter this counter with the, you know, uh, scavenger grounds, but, hey, this card's good. We were talking about uh, the pre-release. Uh, I had, I think I pulled three copies or two or, yeah, I think it was three copies of Countervailing Winds. My um, deck was, or my card, my preview card, or my stamped card, you know, the one with the little logo, was Abandoned Sarcophagus. And then I pulled Overwhelming Splendor out of my packs. Like, that was my pre-release deck. It was as much cycling as I could stick into Abandoned Sarcophagus. Which was really cool because Dev's, you know, preview card was Abandoned Sarcophagus. And we all like SPMTG. I don't think the Raptors are gonna, gonna get us there. We'll let him have a spun though. We'll we'll pass the turn, let him swing. Well, honestly, a lot of us are getting tired of the energy deck. I just wish there were better ways to combat it. I thought that, you know, the Scarab God was one of the greatest things in the world because it it basically brought blue-black control back into standard. And normally when we have blue-black control or those, you know, those uh, uh, paper, rock, scissor meta or whatever, you know, it's always really healthy. And you get crazy stuff like Drake Haven, you know, hitting the top 16 in a, in a major event. So we're actually in a really good meta. It's just that anything running three or more colors is more than likely running energy. And all of those decks feel like you're playing against the same deck every single time you play them. Mizazu, thank you for showing up to the stream. Um, hope we see you again, and uh, don't worry about the name. You know, I, I like Mizazu. I just got to get used to it. Justin, thank you as well, sir. Uh, we're going to play this last game here, go into the wrap-up, and that's going to be it for us for the night anyway. If you do decide you want to see the wrap-up or anything else, you'll be able to find the replay on my channel, um, along with all the other replays. I think I even have a playlist up in the top corner if you check the little eye. Uh, this will be there tomorrow. Rob, thanks for having you. Uh, thanks for coming out tonight. Nothing but a bunch of lands and a sandworm convergence. Let's mulligan this. We want 
We want something good here. I didn't even I didn't even uh, sideboard there against this deck. I don't think we can beat control, which was the one thing we were trying to trying to dodge here. Um, one of the the reasons yeah we want to keep that. One of the reasons everyone is splashed green with other colors and green is so good right now. Uh, but one of the reasons it's always splashed with other colors is because you need help with control. Um, I don't think a mono green deck can answer um, approach of the second sun. Rishkar's expertise. I'm trying to think of exactly what Rishkar's expertise does. Allow you to like draw cards or something crazy? Because I would love that. Play the druid. And next turn we'll play the raptors we probably should have played the raptors this turn okay so we had the negate so he basically completely time walked us with that counter spell okay so we get a champion of Ronus sure And we were able to play around the sensor there because we uh, we had the uh, druid of the cow on tap, or not even not just the sensor, but the countervailing wind. And next turn we'll we'll play this. You may exert Champion Aronis as it attacks. If you do, you may put a creature card from your hand into the battlefield. I really like that card. <laughs> that seems really good. If we draw like a Verdant Suns or something like that that would be amazing we did not do that so we will not be exerting but we can just attack we may run into settle the wreckage here I know this deck runs settle so Four green green, draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. You may cast a card with converted mana cost five or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. Oh, that seems decent. Um, yeah, drawing cards equal to your greatest power. I mean, even here we would draw three cards, and you know we know how broken your draw three cards is. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, we wouldn't be able to cast. Yeah, we would have been able to cast it. Tap that, draw three cards. Wouldn't have been bad. Six. We're definitely going to try to pressure the opponent here. Um, it's definitely what we need to be doing. You need to catch these decks when they do not have their Drake Haven, as uh, that was one of the things that cost uh, Corey Burkhart. You know, his uh, top eight finish was you know if if the deck doesn't hit the um, Drake Haven, then the deck's in a little bit of trouble unless it can pull off things like that. Hi yeah yeah. All right. Well, we're a couple cards off of getting our Sandworm Convergence down. I like cheap cards, especially, you know, when we're trying to play on a budget and things like that. And, um, ooh. One, two, three, four. We, do we play around all the counter and just play it for two? I think we do. Countervailing wins if you've got to. All right. Um, so he's got to remove this, which, I mean, he probably can pretty easily. <clears throat> Otherwise, we're going to start pumping and shooting. Again, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. I know this was a really late uh, live stream. I... Uh, 
I'm in Arizona and we don't change uh, the time zones, but I, I know you guys just recently changed your time zones here a few weeks back. So I'll probably try to get this live stream out about an hour earlier um, than we did today, uh, at least somewhere in that area. Uh, I would like to try to keep it around 8 o'clock central. And um, let's go ahead and put a plus one one counter here. Here's a Nissa. We can attempt that. I assume he just countervailing wins here. Okay, just a straight negate. All right. Well, we should be safe to attack now. So we'll go ahead and take this two points of damage. Again, I will try to get us out a, uh, a nice steady um, schedule and everything. However, we never know exactly when Deb's coming out with his deck, and I do like to try to stream at least the night he comes out with a deck, or at least the very next night after uh, he comes out with a deck. Mm, this isn't really good for him as far as dumping cards, but... We're still not getting there. I don't think we can attack here. If he has a settle and we lose this walking ballista, it's 100% game. Like we're we're out of it. Right now, we need this walking ballista be to become outrageously huge. I guess we do. We I mean we have to try it. If he settles right here, I'm gonna feel so bad. I think if it was like just in a, oh, we are going to get it. So maybe I should have pumped. We would have got an additional point of damage in. Another punt. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry, Boone. I uh, I punted. Oh, wow, he had to forsake the worldly, so... I mean, he can just destroy this whenever he gets ready. So, we're not going to get many more. Like, this is not going to get out... Oh. It's not going to get outrageous, because he can always just forsake the worldly. I do think that we swing this turn, though. Oh, that's nice for us. Um, I'll definitely swing. Again, we're not going to pump. Although, this time it won't be for a punt. <laughs> um, because we're going to try to hour of promise next turn. I would really, really like to uh, get this hour of promise to go off. So, if he wants to go through some trouble tapping some mana and doing something to remove this. I am a-okay with that. Looks like he's just gonna let it resolve, so that means this Hour of Promise is not going to make it. Do we want him to cast these things out of his graveyard? Spend his mana doing that versus the alternative, I guess? Or do we pump? We'll, we'll make him spend this, spend one of his counter spells here. Thanks for the subscribe. I'm sure this just gets like um, censor. Well, he can't censor. He's got to have some kind of counter for it. Can't play negate out of out of the graveyard, but um, double censor. Okay. I mean, I've got nothing better to do with the mana. And another...
another sensor. So he's going to triple sensor. I mean, I'll make him spend all of his sensors. I'm okay with that. <clears throat> now, next turn, if he spends one, two, three... What does he get? Okay, a hieroglyphic. No problem, Boone. Uh, we stream all of his decks. So, uh, I've only been, like, like actually doing this for a few weeks now. But, everyone likes it. I enjoy having, you know, some people around to, you know, stream with and things of that nature. So, ooh, wow, if he taps out right here. Although we can cast, cast out from the... Oh, it's bad. This is instant speed, too, so, I mean... One, two, three... We're gonna try to cast it. There you go, buddy. Show us what you got. I know you got all kinds of good answers to this thing. Countervailing winds. Cycled. And then used. We cannot pay nine for that. No, we cannot. It was one of the reasons we really wanted that hour to, to go off. But it's because the the hour of devast uh, the hour of promise would have allowed us to to sack the graveyard in response to that countervailing winds, and that would have been a great force. And okay, so I mean we do get to shoot him here, which here, let me hold control. That's why we don't have to give him priority back. All right, there we go. Now we can pass priority back to him. need something nice off the top here. Um, we don't have any creatures to actually point the Grasping Dunes at or anything, so uh, we can't even throw a grave. Like, I wish I had some in the grave so that I could use this. Um, which again just reinforces that without champion and wits, hostile desert's not good. Uh, a lot of times you don't have time to be sacrificing deserts when you want to use this. And right now we're actually stuck without a desert that is sacrificable. Okay, so he's going to go impulsing for a... Oh, he, and he got his Drake Haven. Which should spell doom for us, but will give us a body so that we can... Oh, and he's got seven cards in hand. Let's cycle this. We got a Raptor. At least a raptor gives us, uh, you know, something we can point at. So he's going to cycle a cast out, make a drake, which definitely gives us something to point at. Uh, we will... Oh wow. I don't have enough to to activate it. 
it's okay. Now that he's got Drake Haven, I kind of hope he will he will try to close the game out quickly, as the this deck takes such absolute control of the game once it does gain control that it could just slowly beat me to death with this 1-1 if it decided to. Um, I'm pretty sure this deck is firmly in control at this point. I don't think there's a way that I can ever resolve a spell he doesn't want me to have. Um, like, I, I'll, we'll, we'll take a look at the power of this. So we'll, we'll get rid of this Grasping Dunes. And... We'll enter combat. Now remember, because of the Abandoned Sarcophagus, everything in the graveyard can be cast from the graveyard. So he's actually cycling things into his hand. Uh, Another reason we will probably play this deck at some point this week, I normally try to not play uh, control decks, but this is going to be one of those control decks where we're actually doing things, so it may not be as boring as it as it looks. Uh, but, um, yeah, Drakehaven. It, any of you have not got a chance to play the Drakehaven deck, highly recommend it. Cycling deck, awesome, awesome. Countervailing Winds, powerful card. This is kind of uh, God Pharaoh's gift for spells. If you think about, um, if you think about God Pharaoh's gift, you know, being a reanimator deck where you know you get these nice, easy, and, and cheap little ways of getting, um, you know, your uh, creatures back from uh, back from the graveyard and things like that. This Drakehaven deck is a spells version of God Pharaoh's gift, um, and that's 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 how it was explained to me. And once I heard it like that, I was like, "Oh wow, that is right." You know, basically, you just get to play from your graveyard, and you just get to keep drawing cards. Uh, at this point, at this point in the game, he is 18 cards ahead of us as far as cards seen, and we know. Uh, like, take for example, if we go back to the old Sphinx's Tutelage deck, the red-blue one. I don't know if y'all remember the, the red-blue meal deck. Uh, Michael Majors built that deck, and it was allowing him to see 75 and 80% of his deck every single game. And that was just absolutely amazing. Wow, he just got, he, he's now dug into the, the second Drake Haven, at which point, you know, now he's going to be making... You know, double the. We're just gonna go for you know some kind of major swing here. Yeah, we'll sacrifice it to its own ability. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna swing for the fences. For all them fences, watch it. Now he just cast out. So. Like, there's nothing you can do. Like, once this deck gets a hold of it, the only thing that you can do to fight back is to wipe that graveyard. Uh, or destroy the artifact. However, the chances of you actually being able to resolve a spell that could destroy the artifact... <laughs> hey, yeah. Um, so, so, Abandoned Sarcophagus is what allows it to play from the graveyard, and that could be a hit by a braid. However, that's not its win con. That's not how it actually wins. So you're right. You can't just, you know, abrade their their win con. So even if they can't actually play these cards, they can still just cycle and make drakes. So yeah, you know, that's uh, the deck's really really powerful. So the the two decks on my list to play this week are uh, the mono white uh, vehicles and this Drake Haven deck. So. Definitely uh, be trying to play those along with whatever else Dev sends our way. Ooh, well. I 
I mean, that's not going to save us much because, you know, he can just go right into it here. So he's just going to cast everything he wants out of it now. <laughs> Which is, that's pretty much it. Hey, if he wants to, like, get some of these renewed faiths or something like that to get his life total back up to nice and healthy spot, he could do that. Yeah. Um, he's not really hurting. Again, there's almost nothing you can do to this Drake Haven deck if it gets in control of the game. Like, um, sometimes, like, against certain control decks, you can hope to maybe maybe wrestle the game back away from them. It's not happening with this Drake Haven deck. Which is one of the reasons I really liked it. When we were watching uh, Corey Burkhart play, in it, play it in uh, the GP Portland, um, the GP in Portland this weekend, it was just really good. Wow, okay, come on. Um, you guys gonna be mad at me if I scoop? Like, can we scoop safely? I know we're supposed to play it out, but I don't think we have outs here. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to make enough to just finish us this game. I don't know. Maybe he'll cast his Sheffit Dune. Is he gonna is he gonna do the Sheffit, the Sheffit Shuffle, the Sheffit Shuffle? All right. So he does get to kill us this turn. Well, we'll get to um. Yeah, scoop. All right, we'll go ahead and get to the. Get to the overall, you know, parts of the deck. I don't think there's a lot to even say about the deck. This deck was, you know, kind of a one shot pony. We were trying to just kind of squeeze in a Car Carnage Tyrant or, you know, something of that nature, get in something really big, something, and basically slam a sandworm convergence kind of right off of that the only problem with that strategy is it dies to white uh, you know any white deck you come up against is going to be able to just absolutely destroy the deck so you know kind of going into you know pros and cons of the deck this was kind of you know one of those jank decks that you just want to play to play and and that's what we've done here and I, I think that the deck that there's something there to ramp I don't think that you're going to want to keep your ramp in a mono color, but it's a really good spot to start out from. You know, find the cards that you just know you have to have out of the ramp ramp deck, and then kind of add all of the other cards in from an additional color to kind of fix everything and and uh, make sure that you have some answers against you know cards like uh, red and or sorry cards like uh, approach from the second sun and things like that. Uh, personally, I think that a green white ramp deck would be really nice right now. Uh, Sandworm's Convergence is really, really good. Maybe a, a Naya ramp. We don't necessarily have to be in Dinosaurs, but, you know, um, Verdant Sun's not bad. I don't think I'd be wanting to run four copies of Verdant Sun, but, you know, that's, um, he's a, he's like a, a 25 cent card, and, you know, the, the deck was built on a $20 budget, so, uh, overall, I had a lot of fun playing the deck. We did get to stomp on some Teamer Energy, which, you know, is a lot of fun, and, uh, you know, that was great, but the deck does die, you know, hardcore to control. What more can I say? Guys, I had a lot of fun. I hope you had a lot of fun. We'll see you next time here on the sideboard.